We have a dandy of a guest today, Brooksy. A really great guest. You might not have heard of him. You might sound a little different because he's sick. Oh, I was like, who do we have? I was like, we, I don't think we have a guest today. But We don't we're... have a guest, but he might sound <laughs> a whole lot different. Brooksy's I... coming down with, what is it, uh, bronchitis, I think you mentioned that it might be. Coming down with, it's here. Yeah. It's here. But I'm good. I'm good. It's more, when you're a parent, once you have kids, when you're sick and they're sick at the same time, it's like you don't even think about yourself. You're just like, oh, I'm good. Like, whatever. I just need to make sure they're okay. And like, once they go to bed, that's why we're doing this pod in the afternoon. Cause I was like, we normally do it at like 8 p.m. at night, like after I put them down, 8, 8 30. And by that point in the night, it gets worse. Like, when you have respiratory stuff, chest stuff, all that, it gets worse at night. So I was like, mm, let's knock this out while I'm rolling with like 300 milligrams of caffeine, feeling good. Might sound like shit, but I feel better right now. And the kids are chilling right now, playing on iPads. I'm that parent right now. I don't care. Yeah. So for those of you that hear Middlebrooks' voice and you want to make fun of him because he's sick. It's not that bad. Do it because he deserves it. That's fine. Give it to me. Let's talk for agency today, though. Uh, some developments lately. Carlos Correa, big time deal with San Francisco. Yeah. Um, Carlos Rodon. That is seemingly developing as time goes on. Apparently, he wants to be on the East Coast. San Francisco might still be involved. The Yankees yeah. are supposedly the front runners. We'll see there. And then we want to look at who's left, right? Like we've had the bigger dominoes fall with Judge. And they fell earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what helps is having that extra room with the, the luxury tax threshold after the CB, CBT and all that, all the negotiations last year with that. Uh, in the CBA negotiations, sorry. And um, I don't know, maybe teams are just more comfortable making moves earlier because they are they ha- do have that little bit of extra space. Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like dominoes, big dominoes fell a lot earlier this year. There's a lot more at winter meetings than normal. Bryce Harper didn't sign with Philly until spring training had already started. Yeah, man, that's crazy. You, you know, t- back in 2019, I think that was. Sometimes teams like fill up you know, the roles they know they need, and then they'll go for the big dogs after that. But we're seeing them sign the big dogs and then fill in afterwards now. So, but money's being thrown around like crazy. Like if we're going to get right into it, I I did not think Carlos Correa was going to get a 13 year deal, but he can thank Mr. Turner for that. All these shortstops are going to be signed till they're 41 years old. Sander Bogarts, Carlos uh, Correa, and uh, Trey Turner, all of them. They'll be 41 years old when their contract ends. You know, I mean, good for the player good for the player but it's it's it's, we've been through this and i think it's irresponsible by teams to expect i I know they can change position i know but they're also i don't know how the 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 contracts are structured so it might be okay but the biggest reason they do these longer contracts is less aav and they can build around them more per year um i don't know i just you're not gonna get what's the best way to say the, the the only way to secure the prime years of superstars is to overpay and eat the back end of a contract. Eat that back end, if you know what I mean. But to your point, how responsible is that? Does no one remember it's, the Albert Pujols, Miguel Cabrera, Joey Votto, Robinson Cano contracts? Or I don't. don't, I don't, don't. Front offices aren't dumb. I think they know. No, they know. They know what's going to happen, but they know they're yes. also going to get six to seven really good yes. years. Correct. So that's where the overpay for elite talent comes from. Because if you don't, you're not going to have them. Period. And you're going to have to deal with them the next uh, six, seven years. And then th- these GMs now are are m- not all of them. Some of these big name GMs, the Prellers and guys like that, are like, you know what? I don't care. I want to win now. Because if I win a couple championships over the next seven years, no one's going to care that they sucked the last four years of that contract because they gave me two championships. And when you have teams like in New York where World Series are bust every year, San Diego where it's getting real close to that because of the roster they have uh, constructed there, you, it's kind of that's kind of where they're at. It's like, you know what? We're going to play for the next six, seven years and then – you know what? Maybe it might, might not even be their problem anymore by that point. I don't know. The types of contracts have been altered a bit too. If you remember, Trevor Bauer contract was the one that comes to mind. It was very high AAV, short contract, 
and a ton of player options. And, and some of them were incentive-based as well. Carlos Correa did the same thing with Minnesota. Now, all of a sudden, ever since the new CBA, ever since we got through the COVID seasons where money was down, now all of a sudden we're seeing a little bit lower AAV, but longer contract years. Carlos Gray is getting 13 years. Trey Turner, 11 years. Was Xander, well, was, what, 10? I Yeah, 10 was kind of the max, you know, 8 to 10, even 9. I mean, somewhere 8 to 10, yeah. But um. But remember for a couple of years, I just want to, I just want to drop this in. I want to sprinkle this in there. Uh, Another reason for this, you're seeing more of this is because now the national league has a DH. Yeah. So you have a safety valve at the end of that career, those last two or three years of that, if they can't pick it defensively, which they probably won't be able to because history repeats itself, bodies age a certain way. I mean, I know strength and conditioning programs have changed a lot, but the human body hadn't changed that much. Um, that's a lot of miles on those bodies. So, but th- these guys are still going to, they, they're still going to be able to hit, in my opinion. They may, they're not going to hit you 30, 40 homers and hit 300, but they're going to be productive bat. And with the National League adding a DH, gives you a safety valve there where you're like not totally screwed and have to move Xander Bogarts to first base. Like, you know what? We can still use his bat and he'd be productive because he's not on his feet the whole game. He just has four to five at bats and that's it. If he clogs the bases, he clogs the bases. But if he hits me 20 homers and hits 280, perfect. That's what they're, that's best case scenario. Correa had a 10 year, I believe it was 10 year, $275 million deal from the Detroit Tigers last off season. He rejected right. it. He Passing told us that, right? Pa- uh, Passing yeah, was Jeff talking Passing about that. Of, yeah, and uh, he passed on it. Thought he was worth more. Didn't end up getting the deal that he wanted last offseason. Well, he signed, like I just mentioned, the shorter contract year, high AAV, incentive base, player option, et cetera, with Minnesota. Well, when you factor in his one year with Minnesota, then you add in this $350 million deal that he now has with San Francisco, he turned a $275 million <laughs> offer from Detroit into a 14-year, $385.1 million deal when you factor in the Minnesota year plus now San Francisco. So he, re- he rejected 275 ended up getting 385 Great. That's $110 million. I, I want to say this. Um, I don't. A lot of people won't agree with me here. Um, San Francisco just got the best available free agent, overall player. The best overall player, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, More than Judge. His defensive metrics are off the charts. Yes. All right. He's very good defensively. He knows where to position himself. He makes all the plays. He makes spectacular plays. He makes every single routine play. Um, he's going to hit. We know he's going to hit. Uh, he's shown that he can stay healthy, relatively healthy, compared to earlier in his career. Um, I think his body will age better than Aaron Judge's. I'm not saying Aaron Judge is is a bad player. I'm just saying I think Carlos Correa is the best overall player that was in this free agent class. Overall player. Yes, Aaron Judge is a very good defender. I think Carlos Correa Correa is more of a game changer because he's a shortstop, not a right fielder. And I think the longevity of his productivity as a defender is going to age better just because of his body type. Aaron Judge can't help but that he's a massive human being. It helps him hit bombs, so that's part of his game. But... um. I think Carlos Correa is a leader. I've talked to guys who've played with him. They love him. I know he's, you know, his name's kind of tarnished or very tarnished because of the whole Astros cheating scandal. And he was in the center of it. He was kind of the mouthpiece of that clubhouse, if you remember, um, who came out and always took the media head on and, you know, stood up for his teammates. Even though it was wrong, he stood up and had their backs and this and that. And, um, he was unapologetic about it all. It, it was, but you know, it, to a certain extent, I'm not saying what the, I'm not justifying what they did at all, at all. I'm just saying I can respect that he was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna stand up for my guys. I know we screwed up, but instead of multiple people having to deal with the media, I got it. I got this. Like, there's a leadership quality there. Um, there's like, like big brother feel. You know, and just listening to him during the playoffs when he was doing the media stuff and how he was talking about analytics and how he understands all that. Like, that just tells me how smart of a guy he is. He's not just a dumb caveman baseball player because a lot of really good baseball players aren't that smart. Let's just be honest. I'll say that. Like, some of the best players in the game aren't that smart. I'm not going to name names because I don't want to go there. But he's a very smart guy. 
He understands the ins and outs of the business side of the game, which is probably why he's making, like you said, instead of 275, 385 or whatever, whatever it is. Um, he knew it was coming. He knew the player he was. He understands the market. He understands analytics. He understands how players are graded and scouted. He's just smart. He's a leader. He's a, he, he, he's going to be really good for that clubhouse. I don't think San Francisco is going to compete this year. Not with the Dodgers, not with the Padres. Um, but this is your guy you build around. You have him for 13 years. You don't have to win right now as bad as you want to, but this takes the pressure off the front office to get it all done right now. Cause it's not a six or seven. It's not a six year deal where you're like, okay, we have a really small window. We got to win. We have to, we have his career. Yes. We have the six, seven years of his prime. Uh, but this is the guy you want to build around. And I'm a little jealous that he's not on the East coast for me, because it's going to be a lot harder for me to watch him. Um, but whatever, this is, this is really good for San, San Francisco. They need a new leader. They need a new voice in that clubhouse. Now that Buster Posey's gone. Yeah, face, face of the franchise. Face of the franchise. Yeah, 100%. But that voice in that clubhouse, and I talked to Jake Peavy about this. We had an event in Boston a few weeks ago, and he was he worked with the Giants a little bit as a, yep. I don't know, special assistant to the GM, or I don't, I don't know what his title was. But he was like, man, listen, there's all these – everybody wants to point the finger, analytics, this, that, this player, blah, blah, blah. He's like, they're not winning because Buster Posey's gone. And it's not the production. It's the leadership in the clubhouse. He was the voice. He was everything that he was held everything together in there. And when that's gone, Brandon Crawford is a great guy. He's a great leader, but he's also not very vocal. Mm -hmm. He keeps to himself. He's doesn't want to bother you. Just uh, goes and works and does his job. Buster Posey was a guy who was in, in, in everyone's business in a, in a very good way because he was invested in every single player, whether you read your first or second year in the big leagues, first day in the big leagues, or you were a guy like Brandon Belt who'd been there forever. He was invested in your career. He knew everything about your game, and he wanted to help you be better. This is all coming from Jake Peavy. Him saying, like, that's why they didn't have success last year. They missed that leadership that Buster Posey gave them in the past. Mm -hmm. So maybe Carlos Correa steps in there. I'm gonna, It takes time to build that with the team. You can't just step in and be like, boom, leader, done, we're good. you got to build talent around it as well. But that's their leader, and I'll say it again. That was the most that's the most talented player, overall player in this in this free agent class. And if you're curious, well, if the twins thought he was a leader, maybe they would have offered him. Well, they offered him a 10 year, $285 million deal. For the twins, that's a boatload. For the yeah. twins who are considered a mid to smaller market team compared to the bigger markets, that's a big time deal. So it's a big, it's a huge lot. deal. And does that really put you over the top? It, it, that's the thing is it doesn't make you better. It makes you the same. It's kind of like the, the Yankees and they yeah. sign judge. Mm -hmm. Like that didn't make them better. They're just the same. So they also they have, have Royce Lewis who they're looking to fill that void at shortstop with. He Royce Lewis was a top five prospect all the way up the minor leagues this last year. He ended up right. getting injured out in center field. So yeah. they're going to have a shortstop in waiting in Minnesota. In the meantime, he's and they, they develop players there. Honestly, mm -hmm. like, Oh, excuse me. One of my best friends, a uh, guy named Alex Hassan, who we should get him on here at some point. He, he was my roommate through the minor leagues for a long time. Grew up in Milton, Massachusetts. He ended up getting to the big leagues in 2014 with the Sox. He was like a hometown kid. He's the uh, my farm director for the Twins the last couple of years, and um, he does a great job. So I would love to hear his perspective on all that and like what their plan is going forward. So I'm going to hit him up, see if we can get him on the show. It'd be good. Are we gonna get Correa on the show? You had a uh, you um, that. Yeah, it I uh we talked. I texted him the other day when he signed the deal and just kind of like congrats, happy for you, this, that. But I didn't I didn't bring up the pod. I brought the we talked about the pod like a month ago. And uh and I was like, listen, not right now, because I want to wait till you're really rich or richer, I'm richer. <laughs> and uh when everything slows down, we'll get on. He's like, No doubt, I got you. We were talking oh, it was towards the it was like the World Series when he was doing all the stuff I was talking about with the media, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. You're like, this is fun, like you're doing a great job, you're you're helping grow the game, like you're saying all the right things. And uh, he's like, yeah, once everything slows down, I'm in. I'll come on the pod. So I'm going to hold you to that, CC. We can move on. But first, I want to ask it. What are you doing with Crawford? Are you putting him at second, third base? You're putting Correa at shortstop. Absolutely, right? I don't – I need to look at their roster. Like, pull up their projected so they had, they had lineup. David, they had David VR, who they really liked last year. But he's not established. They had him at third base. Second base, Tyro Estrada actually – Who was it? Played. David VR. 
at third hey, base. It's not David. It is David VR. Oh, I'm thinking of someone else then. I played with a different VR. So he had nine homers in 52 games last year with the Giants. He was okay. their starting third baseman for the last two months. But at second base, they had Tyro Estrada. Tyro Estrada had a sneaky good year last year. He's a good year. player. He's a good player. Yeah. He played 140 games, hit 260, 722 OPS. He had 14 homers, 62 ribbies at the second base position. And he played good defensively as well. Hmm. So what do you do with Crawford? I, I, you have the DH option. <laughs> I'm going to text him right now. I'm okay. texting Crawford right now. Please Hold do. On. Yeah. I'm doing it. And if you need to pause this and come That's back fine. to it. That's fine. Because I'm curious. I, I, you don't sign a guy for $350 million. You don't sign a shortstop who has a career 70 defensive run saved, which is the most among shortstops since he made his debut. That's Carlos Correa. You're not going to boot him over to third base for, for a year. There's no way. You're signing him because he's in his prime. You signed him for a 13-year deal <laughs> so that you can get his prime. There's no I just text, way to boot him. I just over. text Crawford. I said, bro. Where the hell are you going to play? <laughs> and I was like, never mind. Just tell him to move Correa's ass to third base. <laughs> <laughs> See what he says. I don't know. He's like one of those guys who doesn't text back. He'll text me back in like two weeks and pretend like it's five minutes. You know, yeah. that's well, like that's... his, that's like his personality is just like, doo, 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 doo. like just living life. I'm happy. With my... And he's got like a million kids. So he's busy. So we'll see if he texts me back. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll throw this on here. I'm curious. Because, like, I thought about that, too, when he signed. I was like, what about Craw? Like, what's yeah. Crawford going to do? You don't want that to impede you from getting a guy like Carlos Carlos Correa, though, because Brandon what Crawford did... is only signed for one. Right. At this point in his career, right. Yeah. So you do. But you also don't want to waste what's left in that, because in 2021, right. he had a really good year. And he was top three, top four in MVP voting? Top four, yeah. Four. Yeah. And it, you have the DH option. I don't know. We'll see. And it depends goes. on where his bat's at, like. Uh, what's going on with Belt? Belt's free agent, so he is a free agent. Okay, here I can give here. Let me give you their depth chart just to give you an idea. Just off the top of my head, they have Joey Bart at catcher. Correct. At first, I don't know actually who they have at first base. They could. Do they have Darren Ruff still? No, he was a Met last year. Actually, he was a midseason. Why player. am I thinking? Why do I remember him as a Giant? Was that twenty twenty one? That was 2021. So he he was there last year. He was a, he was a trade deadline pickup. By That's the what it was. Okay. I was like, I know I remember him in a Giants uniform. So right now they had J.D. Davis at first base, according to Fangrass. That's okay. not, that's That was part of the trade, I think. That's true. He could play first base. And he actually mashed last year with San Francisco. Oh, he can hit. He months. can hit. He's a North people Cal. Don't, belt, bro. People forget, like, San Francisco is a hard place to hit, man. The ball, like, once it gets dark there, the ball goes nowhere. So here's how they have it laid out on Fangrass. They have Tyra Estrada at third base, so they kick David VR out. And then they put Correa at shortstop. And they have, no, I'm sorry, Tyra Estrada at second base, Brandon Crawford at third base. Yeah, third base makes the most sense to me. And then... Still got that arm. Still got that cannon over there. Who? Oh, J.D. Davis. J.D. They Davis could play third too, but... They had like Evan, Evan Longoria, but he was never healthy. Right. Anyways, it's interesting. I mean, I don't. I agree with you. I don't Longo's a free guys. agent too, right? Who? Longo. He's a free agent. Yeah. Hmm. I agree with you. I don't think San Francisco is ready to compete with San Francisco and the Dodgers. But remember, it was a year ago. That what about Kapler, man? Are you on Kapler still? I like Kapler. I like Kapler too. He was my last manager I had. Good guy. Um, on the goal approach. I like the way that he handles his players. He treats them like. I, I wish. Um... I'm trying to think of the best way to say this without sounding like a dickhead, because I love Cap. I just think he's got his head in like the public too much. Like, what's going on? Like, I understand like you have a platform, you want to use it, but it also do, it becomes a distraction to a certain extent, you know. And I'm not I'm not one of those shut up and dribble guys. Like, I I like for athletes to use their platform if they believe in something, um, because you have a big audience, especially on social media. My dad's calling me, but um. I was hoping that was Brandon Crawford, but it's my dad. Shut up, dad. Um, nah, he's I just feel like he he got he got in the mix a little too much, and that became a distraction in that clubhouse, in my opinion. Um, and then there were some other issues they had um, with players not being happy, it seemed like, with him and his decisions. And he's very analytical-based. 
Um, a lot of that is coming from the front office, and he's on board with that. He understands it. I get it. That's how it was beginning in Philly when I was there in 2018. But I don't know, man. He's, I feel like he's a very good leader, but if you don't buy in, you're like, this is corny. Like, it's it's so over the top, like, positive and oozing positivity, and he's very spiritual. and Russell Wilson-esque. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But it, But not as, like, religious but spiritual and like, it's hard to explain. He's like, he's kind of like a hippie. You know? I think there's, there's absolutely something to the relatability aspect. I've, I've been critical of Russ, not to, I know this is a baseball podcast. I've been very critical of Russell Wilson for when he was with the Seahawks even. And then he went over to Denver and I'm like, he's not relatable. Like you have to be a guy. You have to, like, if you want to be a leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, but at the same time, like, I can respect you being like, this is who I am. I'm not going to fucking change. 100%. So it was like, yeah, you got to pick one side of the fence or the other. And it all comes, honestly, it all comes down to performance. And if you're playing well, everyone's, like, probably converting to Christianity if you're playing well. But if not, (laughs) they're like, look at this fucking clown. Like, you know, because that's just, that's, that's those, it's a result-driven industry. It's sports, professional sports. If you don't play well people are all over you if you're doing fucking running laps around the field pregame butt naked but you're throwing for 350 yards every game and have a you know completion percentage of 75 percent or higher like no one gives a shit it's all about performance and he's sucking right now he has more bathrooms in his home than he's thrown touchdowns this year have you seen that <laughs> his yeah. new home uh he has like 12 bathrooms he's done like eight touchdown passes jesus he's probably got more pop star wise as he does touchdowns too stop one He's a one woman man. Uh, you, to use another example of another sport, Steve Kerr is very outspoken politically yeah. and social um, issues. And I don't think it's a distraction at all. So I think it depends. I think it depends on the roster. I think it depends on the clubhouse. I think it depends on your platform. <laughs> depends on how. Yeah, much I mean, there. Steve Kerr was very outspoken as far as like racial injustice and things like that. And that is very, uh, that's a very important topic in the NBA because of the demographic. Mm-hmm. Same with the NFL. So I feel, I mean, that's, that's not a race thing that, I mean, it, it is a race thing, but it's not like a, it's just know yeah. your, know your audience. Yeah. You know, let's move on to the Dodgers. There's a lot of, talk. Uh, you know, I like it when we get off the rails a little bit and talk about other things. That's kind of fun. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. With that said, let's go to the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. What are they doing? Because they signed Noah Syndergaard to a one-year deal. They signed Shelby Miller to be a reliever. Um, that's pretty much it. They lost their shortstop in Trey Turner. They could potentially kick Gavin Lux over to shortstop. They lost Cody Bellinger, who was their starting center fielder. And Justin Turner is still a free agent. So right now, they're out of shortstop center fielder and third baseman. Yeah, they did. They, they added to their rotation a bit. There's a chance a little birdie told me that there's a chance Trevor Bauer could potentially pitch in 2023, but you don't want to put your. I don't know, man, because Manfred hates that guy. I think there's a chance he could pitch. All right. So I'm right now. Um, I know there's a lot of missing links with their position players in their lineup, but I'm looking at the starting pitching. Uh, Carlos or Carlos. Clayton Kershaw, Julio Arias, Tony Gonsolin, Dustin May will be back. Uh, now Noah Syndergaard. They refuse to spend money on their bullpen, and I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't know. So no, well, as I'm looking at their starting much. pitching, if they're all healthy, like they have a chance to be really good. But these are these are guys who all have, outside of Julio Arias, who have had a lot of injuries the last few years. Kershaw's had the back issues nonstop. Arias has been a stud, like quietly one of the better pitchers in the game. Workhorse, too. Just Workhorse, dude. Workhorse. Man. Going, yeah, like gets better as the season goes on. Tony Gonzalez had that flexor strain last year and didn't really look the same when he came back. Dustin May, Syndergaard. I think Syndergaard's a really good sign for $13 million. Mm-hmm. Um, 130 innings pitched last year. That's the most since 2019. The one thing I want to point out is I think – LA is a really good spot for someone like him who is rebuilding himself because he doesn't throw 98 anymore. He averages more like 93, 94, and he's sinking the ball now. He never did that until the last couple of years coming back from Tommy John. Mark Pryor has helped a lot of guys remake themselves. Andrew Heaney sucked. Mm -hmm. Solid, right? Tyler Anderson. Uh, Tyler Anderson. 
nasty. One of the better pitchers in the NL last year. Tony Gonsolin went from like a swing man in the bullpen to an ace last year um, before the injury. So maybe Mark Pryor has something going over there. And this could be a really good combination. If I'm not saying center guard is going to be throwing 98 again, but if he can hone in that sinker, because we don't have that many sinker guys anymore, then all of a sudden I'll finish this a minute, a minute, a minute because Brandon Crawford just takes me back. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> he said, Hey man, you got any extra third base gloves I can borrow? <laughs> Uh, unless something changes, I've been told he will be the shortstop. <laughs> okay. Clearly, we knew that. So there's your answer. Brandon Crawford's going to play third base. Okay. That's awesome. All right. Well, there's our answer. Yeah. Um, which we kind of figured, but anyways, yeah. back to the Dodgers. I think Syndergaard could be a really good sign just because Mark Pryor has been turning guys around. And Syndergaard was finding it last year. He got to the Phillies. He had some good outings. Um. I don't know. Like, let's say he throws 150 innings. Like, that's a that's going to be a really solid piece for them for 13 million. No, I like the signing. My issue with the Dodgers, and maybe it's not an issue yet because there's a theory out there that they're starting to save up some money to be able to afford Shohei Otani. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. But when have they ever worried about saving money? That's the weird thing. So that's my thing with the Dodgers right now. So you lose your so you lose your starting shortstop and Trey Turner. You lose your starting center fielder and Cody Bellinger. Justin Turner, your starting third baseman, is currently a free agent. They went through the entire winter meet winter meetings. All they did was sign Jason Hayward to a minor league deal. Minor they signed Shelby right. Miller, who hasn't pitched meaningful innings in probably five years. They went and signed Syndergaard a couple weeks later. The Dodgers, who have had the number one payroll in all of baseball the last two seasons, each of the last two seasons, they haven't really, for, for their standards, haven't spent a dime. This right. offseason. And everyone's seen the uh, Brian Windhorse pointing fingers meme, right? What are the Dodgers doing? Shohei Otani is going to be a free agent after next season. The Dodgers reportedly offered Otani a contract when he was coming over from Japan. He ultimately decided to go to the Angels. Boy, did he fuck that up. Room. <laughs> it could be for, you know, formulating a plan to get Otani to drive up the I-5 up to Dodger Stadium right down the road from Anaheim. What I mean... They better have $500 million. But if you're the Dodgers, you when you have this much talent, you have Mookie Betts, who's age 30, Freddie Freeman, 33. These guys aren't getting younger. You can't waste a season just to go get Shohei Otani next season. Clayton Kershaw is your ace. I think the they Rose think Mason. it doesn't yeah. matter, and they'll, they'll compete anyways. Because think of, like, dude, they've been winning the division by, like, 30 games. Yeah. Like, they're do you think they're going to be thir- – are they going to be 30 games worse? No, but the Padres are going to be 15 games better. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, gonna, dude, the Padres made the playoffs and went to the end. Look, I'm all for it because hockey. I want a, at least a, I would love to see meaningful games being played between the Dodgers and the Padres come mid September. Yeah. Because we've planned on that the last two years and the Padres pooped their pants the last two months, you know? So it, it's going to be. It's gonna be interesting to see, and I, I, I'm a big fan of wanting little brother, big big brother to kind of even out a little bit, a lot of bit. I want it to be even because it's better baseball, and I'm actually gonna stay up and watch those games. Ken Rosenthal reported that the Dodgers could have been hesitant to sign Carlos Correa because the front office was afraid of the backlash from Dodger fans because the Astros were the ones right. who stole the World Series from the Dodgers in 2017. Can you, oh my God, when he's first at bat in Dodger Stadium as a giant, now he plays that place is going to fucking yeah. shake to the ground with booze. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what? Carlos Correa loves it. Yeah, And you're going to do nothing but make him better. So you're almost better off cheering for him. Yeah. You, you think he's not used to being booed the past five years? He didn't give a shit about being booed. Boo him. You know what they need to do? They need to do the uh, the Tim Duncan, Andrew Luck trash talk. Hey, good hit. Hey, good job out there, Carlos. No, hey, you think we'll be, like, hey, like, I, we'll be hilarious if he comes up? No, buddy. Shortstop. Number, I don't know what number he is. Carlos Correa. Crickets. Just fucking silence. Yeah. That would fuck with me because I'd be like, what the fuck's going on? Yes. Oh. Like if it was just no like no music, no nothing, you just hear like the pitcher like 
digging in on the rubber. Especially Dodger Stadium, too. You have 45, 50,000 people, four stories high. Shit. It's Friday, yeah. Saturday. It's more than that. No walk up, obviously. It's a away game, but no walk up music, no sound. All you hear is the guy in left field banging saying, on a trash dogs. can in the stands. Hot dogs, Dodger dogs, right field. No, nothing. I want everybody silent. Dodger dogs are just silent. I want to hear Juan Pablo in the left center field stands fart. <laughs> it's just so silent. Oh boy. That's fun. <laughs> That's going to, I do. Padres, Dodgers, great rivalry. Now San Francisco, not that it wasn't already a great rivalry, but it's going to be like even more fun now. Even with San Francisco not being a super competitive team, in my opinion, I, I didn't think they were going to be competitive in 2021 either, and they won 108 games. So who knows? But it's going to be fun. It's good baseball. It's good entertainment, for, and it's good for the product of the game. One last nugget, and we can move on. There were some people critical of San Francisco signing Korea. Well, there were a lot of people that were celebrating the Phillies for signing Trey Turner. You look at their side-by-side -side splits. Trey Turner is two years older. They both made their debuts in 2015, Correa and Turner. Correa has a just a bit lower OPS, but he has more home runs, more RBI, more uh, the same extra base hits, higher WRC+, plus, higher OPS. Out above average. Plus, fewer stolen bases, defensive runs saved. Trey Turner has a negative two Defensive run saved in his career. Carlos Correa has 70, plus 70. The war, oh, 39. Jesus. Dude, 39 I didn't realize it was that. I didn't know it was that big. I thought it was like plus 30. Yeah, plus 70. And then for the wins above replacement, Dear God, 39 and a half for Correa, 29.7 for turn. So Correa hasn't beat in 75 You know why that's crazy? Because he's not a burner. He's not a super quick, agile guy. Like, that just tells me how good his first step is and how his, like, I don't know. He just intuition of like where the ball's being hit. He knows what pitch is being thrown, especially even more so now because he didn't have to worry about seeing signs. He has pitch calm in his ear. And like that just intuition of knowing where the ball is going to go, where it's pitched, where the reading swings, that first step quickness, that just, that's insane because Trey Turner's that little quick, he's like a little flea out there back and forth, back and forth. So quick, like agile. Correa's a good runner. He's very athletic. He's not quick like that. And for him to have that, 70 defensive friends that's fucking nuts man i didn't know that yeah I, and i knew it was good i knew it was like one of the best in the game if not the best I, but i thought it was like 30 or 40 70 good lord and they're both going to be signed through their age 41 seasons correa is two years younger the average annual value of trey turner 27.2 million carlos created 26.9 so correa is just a slight bit cheaper and he's also has him beat in 75% of those categories. Let's move on. What do you think Carlos Rodon is going to sign? Because the latest report is that the Yankees could be the front runner, but they're still far away from what he wants monetarily and yearly. Yeah, I feel like he's asking for a lot more now, right? I think the market for him is just... I thought it was originally like a five-year deal, and I feel like he's asking for a seven-year deal now, supposedly. I think there's not a lot of starting pitching options right now, and there are teams that are pressing a bit, and they know that Carlos Rodon is the best arm available now. You know what would be cool, in my opinion, is if the Texas Rangers signed him. They could still be in the running. I think they, they still be in the running, but I feel like, damn man, I think they signed Andrew Heaney because they weren't positive they were going to get Carlos Rodon. Rodon is from, I want to say, like North Carolina. Yeah, he is. He and went so, to NC State. Yeah, and so people are saying that he wants to be back on the East Coast. Yeah, I don't blame him. Yeah. West Coast sucks. <laughs> you didn't even flinch when I said that. I I'm was waiting for you to be like, comment. fuck you. I'm not going to comment. Um, I think the Yankees push hard here. I mean, think about their rotation. Like, that would be massive. But <laughs> they, they, have, they need to worry about their offense. They opinion. haven't gotten any better. No, yeah. they haven't. But, I mean, Rodon makes them better, but only once every yeah. five days. Yeah. Like you gotta have they, their lineup needs to be better. They I think they need to worry more about the shortstop position, like make a trade or something. I don't know. They I think they, they're sold they have on whole, bullpen. third base. Their whole left side of their their infield is like in question, in my opinion. I think they're sold on Volpe at short. I think that he's a number four prospect in baseball. I think no, they, I like that. I like that. But you're also the New York Yankee, so you don't really roll the dice on guys like. Eh, we'll see if he develops in the big leagues, and he's. I Normally, the New York Yankees are like, oh, this guy's got three to four solid years in the big leagues. We'll take him. 
IKF uh, is going to be playing shortstop until Volpe is ready. I think yeah. But like, what does Josh Donaldson have left in the tank? Yeah. yeah it's like... The Blue Jays have made some noise. They went and signed Chris Bassett, which I like that. Did starting pitching. And then I they like went that. signed Kevin Kiermaier to a one year, $9 million deal. Yeah. So the Blue Jays, I've been very critical of the Blue Jays. In my opinion, their championship window is right now. And they didn't do now, anything. The like deadline. the next two so years. Yeah, I agree. I hated what they did at the deadline last year. They fired their manager midseason. You don't fire your manager to make it to the wild card round. You fire your manager to win a world. Yeah, but how often? Yeah, but listen, only three interim managers, well, four, one guy did it twice, uh, Bob Lemon with the Yankees. Like the, the only three man, interim managers that ever made it to the World Series in the history of the game. My like Jack favorite. McKeon with the Marlins in, in what, 2001. Yeah. Uh, Bob Lemon did it twice with the Yankees. Um, who's the other one? Oh, Rob this year, Rob Thompson. Rob yeah. Thompson. My yeah. point is, though, if you're a front office and you're going to fire that manager, you better so be that, aggressive at the deadline. Yeah, but that's a rare before. thing to like bring a guy in and be like, World Series or bust. Like, that, that doesn't happen. Like, look at the history of the game four times with three different guys. Yeah. Come I on. just think front office could have done a better job. And they're now starting to make some noise with Bassett and Kevin Kiermaier to their credit. Yeah, they traded no, away. I, I yeah. like them. I like them. The Red Sox uh, haven't gotten much better. Baltimore actually hasn't done shit. Um, I, I thought Baltimore would be a little more aggressive this offseason considering they're young guys and uh, are kind of ready to go. What? Did they sign a pitcher? I think they, they added a starter. Who did they add? That's a great question. I still think Justin Turner goes there. That's still my like out of the like out of left field signing. Just because he started there, I could see him finishing his career there. They added Cal Gibson. Okay, that's that's a good piece. I mean, he's not he's like middle of the road. They also but he's like a veteran guy, so it's they have some big time prospects coming up, dude. The Orioles have a system. Oh, I know they do, but you need to integrate some veterans. Agreed. Gunnar Henderson's going to be playing there. Oh, they added. uh, they signed Adam Frazier to play second base as well. They signed Adam Frazier? Yeah. So they're essentially replacing Rudin. He kind of fell off when he went to San Diego. Hmm. Uh, yes, he did. He was like in the running for the batting title. And then he hit like 220 with San Diego, went up to Seattle and kind of did much of the same. Yeah. I wonder, that's that's why these front offices aren't always encouraged to sign high average guys because there's it doesn't always translate into long term. Well, you want to mix in like the Yankees. They need to mix in some contact bats with all the power. You do. You need that balance, but it's also hard. This is the hardest ever era to hit for average. <laughs> just because the, 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 of the arms. The expected batting average and the expected OPS. Like these are real numbers that front offices use. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. It sounds silly to be like, expected this or that, but like that's it's a really good grading system to see what player you're getting. Okay. Let's talk about, as we wrap things up here, let's talk about some of the free agents that are still lingering. The big one on the list, Dansby Swanson is still on. Boston could be. I I don't think Boston's going to be in the mix. I don't think they make a panic sign because of losing Xander. The Dodgers. Um, I think Swanson's numbers went way up higher than they should have been. It's inflated because of what all these other shortstops signed for. So you're going to look at Swanson signing an eight to ten year deal, and we thought originally you could get him for six, like Trevor Story type contract, you know, six for one hundred and fifty. That's not going to happen now. Story he's going to, he's going to sign for two hundred, but he's going to he's going to sign for more more than two hundred. He's going to be like two twenty. Trevor Story should have signed a one year deal and proved itself. And yeah, but who forty tanks at Coors Field, and then he's getting a ten year deal. Yeah, but who knows? I don't, I think he wanted out. They, yeah. you know. Anyways, we're Samson or Samson Swanson Samsonite. I was way off. <laughs> Swanson. I think the Cubs are in hard because they were they were in hard on Correa and lost, and now they had this money ready to give to Correa. They couldn't compete with. They didn't want to sign him for thirteen years, yeah, uh, or or that much money. That's a big commitment. So um, I think the Cubs are in hard on Swanson just because it's going to fit what they wanted to pay. So you're not going to get the same type player, but you're going to get a really good player who's kind of late blossomed. You know, the last couple of years, early in his career, he didn't. You're like, maybe he's not who he is, and then the last couple of years has really started to turn it on. I'm surprised the Braves didn't extend him. 
Mm-hmm. Or maybe maybe maybe, maybe they tried and Swanson yeah. was like, I don't want, I don't want to. I want to test the market and get paid, which that's a good agent kind of had foreseeing what was coming in the in the market for shortstops. But um he just got married and his wife plays soccer in Chicago as a professional yeah. soccer player. So there's a tie there. Mm-hmm. There's a tie there. I have a buddy who's a scout over there as well, and they are uh they want him. They love themselves some Dansby. Yeah, but it all comes down to the numbers, baby. It's a numbers I'm gonna, game. I'm gonna spray some Dansby on him. What about Joey Gallo? It's kind of interesting. Joey Gallo is interesting. I I have no prediction. Go to Coors Field, man. All these all these players that need to prove themselves for a year. Go to Coors Field for a year and hit 35 tanks, and then right off into the sunset. Yeah, but there's guys like that, like big body guys, don't like going out there because of the elevation. It's hard to stay healthy. Joey Gallo's number will numbers. Yeah, he's still going to strike out a shit ton, but he's going to have a higher average. He's going to probably hit 240 because of the shift not being there. The yeah. shift burned him through his career. So those rollover rockets that are outs are now hits. So um, I don't know. Do you think he's an everyday player, Joey Gallo? Um, at this point, in his dude, career. he's super athletic. I I would give him a chance because of the ceiling. And no shift and give him two months and see what happens. Um, just because the ceiling is super high. I want to see, you know, went to LA and looked better. Um uh, yeah, I would he'd be an everyday player for the first 50 games for me. And then I'm and then I'm gonna see what what's up with that, but look at his numbers from there. But with the, with no shift, like I'm giving him a chance. And he's super athletic, he can play defense, he's a gold glover in the outfield. He's got a cannon, great shower teammate. Got to mix him in there. I want to start naming off some dudes that are still available. If they pique your interest, stop me. You didn't even flinch at my shower teammate. Yeah, I gave you the look. You we know, showered together. You know how I feel about your comments. Gene Segura <laughs> is available. Solid player. I could see. Uh, I could see Boston being in the mix there. Because Trevor, if, if Trevor Story's moving to shortstop. I could see Segura signing like a two or three year deal. Justin Turner is available. I still think he goes to the Baltimore Orioles. That's just like an out of nowhere signing, but he started, he was drafted by them, came up with them. I just, it seems fun. Like maybe finish his career there. I think he goes back to LA. He did the same. Uh, the they time. need him. <laughs> yeah, they need him. Brandon Jury is a free agent. Evan Longoria is a free agent. Uh, Brian Anderson, free agent. Andrew Benintendi, he's a 28 year old outfielder. He had a 4.5 war last season. He is a free agent. Yeah, and there's a contact guy, too. He's gonna he's not going to hit for a lot of pop, but he can hit you 300. Jerks and Profar had a hell of a season last year of San Diego. He's probably not going to go back to San Diego just considering all the other assets they have, but Profar is a good player that can play just about everywhere in the infield. Everywhere yeah, in the he can play everywhere in the infield. Plays a okay left field last year for the Padres. He's not going to be like elite out there, but he's going to be serviceable. Spark um, too. Hmm? He's just a spark plug. Never think he, he does. Is he a switch hitter? Or is he just hit? He just is. He is a switch hitter. He's better lefty, but yeah. Adam Duvall is a free agent. Tommy Pham. Nimo signed. Center field is pretty bleak right now. I mean, if you're looking for a starting center fielder, there's, there's not too many options. Yeah. Will Myers, for agent. Michael Conforto. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm curious about that because I I had him tied to Boston a little bit. Yeah, but I don't know anymore. I like him for it, though. He's coming off what shoulder surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the last of the hitters here, JD Martinez. I think he's very interesting. The long ball wasn't there last year, but the guy still had 60 extra base hits last year. No, he did. Fen- I mean, Fenway's is a doubles park. You yeah. know, big right center wall to bang it off of. He um he doesn't move well and he has a back he has a back that flares up a lot. And when his back flares up, he's a singles hitter. He can hit, but he'll be a singles hitter and he's not gonna run he's gonna take two hits to score him. He's not gonna score from first. He's slow as shit. Look out for San Francisco with JD. I don't hate that. Really good fit. He and will not he did not play one inning in as in a, as a defender last year. That's fine. He was strictly a DH. So yeah. And I, dude, I've made this point before. I think Boston and San Francisco, same franchise. They think the same. They sign the same types of players. They uh, they use their money similarly. Very Farns analytical. Very analytical. Very. 
Michael Brantley, Andrew McCutcheon, Trey Mancini, Nelson Cruz, Luke Voigt, all for agents. There's and then, still some good names out there, like yeah, second and third are. tier players, but but players that can be difference makers. There's still a lot. Michael Brantley can hit. Mm-hmm. Luke Voigt, when he's healthy, he can bang. He can throw some homers out there. Um, Mancini, Mancini's a good player. He just didn't play well in Houston. Yeah. Oh. Starting pitching wise, Nathan Eovaldi, your your buddies with. Uh, They're um. Boston's trying to resign him. Troy Kluber, Wade Miley, Rich Hill, old man. See, Rich I Hill. like Kluber to Boston. Uh, he he grew up right hey, outside. Why are the Rays becoming a farm team for the Reds for the Red Sox? I mean, Corey Kluber's been awesome. everywhere, dude. Corey yeah. Kluber's been he played for the Yankees too. I know, but you're seeing these Tampa Bay guys come over to Heimblum in Boston. Uh, because I mean, because he was I, there, probably. I get why I'm saying. Yeah. That um, be because that scouting department. Heim Bloom was part of that scouting department. <laughs> so they think the same. They look at the same players. They look at the same stats and analytics and metrics to grade players. So that's probably why they have like the same seen, players. Have you ever seen the Tampa Bay Rays general manager? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm going to send you a photo. He was on MLB Network during the winter meetings. And I said, who is this? college intern on MLB network right now. Oh, I, I think I know. I think I'm going to know who you're talking about. It's no disrespect to him. He obviously knows what he's doing. Peter, Peter Bendix. And he actually looks older in his like headshots. But in person, when he's completely clean shaven, he legitimately looks 25. Did you send it to me? No. Here it is. This is a great photo too, because he's like he's got the he's got the lanyard and like half a fro going. Fro. He's got a fro. He's got like that curly hair. Bro, how much money did Scott Boris make this offseason? A lot. He he doesn't even work anymore. He just has a bunch <laughs> of <laughs> what the fuck? Right. How is- recent is that picture? I think that picture's of him when he was an intern. Let's see. That's a World Series. That was the 2020 World Series. Good Lord. That's their GM? Yes. Fucking baseball just taken over <laughs> by geeks, bro. You're telling me that guy can't hit a 98-mile-an-hour fastball up in I'm telling sport. you he's never seen one in his life. <laughs> <sighs> you ready here? Go take some emergency and... Uh, nah, I'm good. I'm going to take care of these kids. We don't speak before uh, we don't speak before the holidays. Waken Rakers, have a happy holidays and merry Christmas, huh? Yeah. I think we will speak before then. We'll see. Uh... I'm hoping next week we have something dialed up. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working yeah. on it. He, uh, th- I'm working on this guy. He's traveling from Arizona to Aruba. Mm. Uh, he gets to Aruba on Saturday. Try to work something out. You guys can do the math. Figure that out on your own. I'm working on it. <laughs> <They're bogus. clears throat> Excuse me. Why would you ruin that? What? Ruin what? You ruined it. I I'm, I'm leaving. I'm hanging up. <clears throat> All right, guys. Happy holidays. We'll talk to you next week.